logistics, machine building, or consumer goods all have a lot of common application, such as width and height measurement, overhang detection, leading edge detection, or even slack detection. The new SIG SLG2 is here to solve all these applications with a single device, since it's easy to configure and integrate into existing solutions. Hi, this is TJ Singh, your SIG product specialist at ENM in Southern California. In this video, we will talk about the new SIG SLG2. The new SIG SLG2 is extremely easy to configure since it has IOLink and with the SOPA software from SIG, you can very easily configure it. And the new slim design with flat and slim versions of the device make integration a piece of cake. Let's do a quick product overview and then I will show you the software side of it and how easy it is to configure the device. Stable and slim housing with no blind zone and a slim and flat version to provide ease of integration, easy and flexible mounting thanks to sliding nuts concept which saves time and effort. Multi cross beam function to detect objects which are as flat as one millimeter. We also have the new patented worldwide thinnest optic to provide maximum robustness by almost ignoring all ambient light. There is inbuilt smart zoning features that allow you to simply solve multiple tasks with the same unit. We also have IOLink for easy setup, extensive diagnostic information as well as you can do predictive maintenance which makes operator's life extremely easy. So this is how the software looks like. It's called SOPAS ET. Once you connect your device, it pops up on the left side of the window. Double click on it and then we'll see the configuration interface. This is what it looks like. And if I insert my fingers between these light grids, you will see them moving here with the red lines. And if I take it out, we are good. So the very first thing under the home screen is all this information on the right side. This is displayed by IOLink. You can get that information. Next step is go to general setting tab, click on it. And firstly, alignment aid is required. So this tells you how nicely your light grids are uh, aligned. So let's say I move it and you can see it go down to 50 and even 8%. Let's bring it back to 100 or at least close to it. <laughs> All right, so once you do that, next step is teach in. Press on the teach in button and it now is start. Uh, beam blanking. So this feature is really cool. If you have some kind of an object that will stay in the path of your light grids, you can simply block those beams so as to ignore them. Next thing is crop, cross beam. Uh, Crossbeam simply allows you to make the device very much more sensitive. But in our case, we don't need it right now. And always remember, now you have teach in necessary. This is because if you turn on Crossbeam, you have to reteach it. Okay, and the last thing is beam numeration. This means either you have mounted it upside down or you're going bottom to the top. All right, let's move to the next step, which is zones. Now, this is the coolest part about this light grid. You have four different zones and you can do a bunch of features with it. Let me turn on the view feature first for all of them. So you can see what one, two, three, four represent. Let's say I have four zone in this entire light beam and uh, I will go from one to five as my first zone. I will go from six to 10 as my next zone and from 11 to 15 as my third zone and 16 to 20 as my fourth zone and it is represented by these lines here one two three four and function simply defines either number of beams blocked 
last beam blocked or first beam blocked. So in my case, I have number of beams blocked as long as it's greater than equal to one, it should turn on an output and the outputs are represented by the status here or on the left side you can see the Q ints. So if I insert my finger on the bottom, you will see the first one triggered. If I move upwards, I trigger the second output and same thing third and the fourth one. And that's how simple it is and quite intuitive. All right, next thing is smart tasks. What this does is allows you to manipulate the logic itself on the device. Uh, this has two digital outputs, so QL1 and QL2 represents that, and QINT1234 are your IOLink outputs, which is over process data. So now uh, my um, pin 2 is a multifunctional pin. I can either have it as an input or I can also have it, have it as a switching output. So let's deactivate it. So I'll do QN2, which is obviously my zone two, will be my second output and zone one, QN1 is my first output. And you can also do some timers on it. You can do delays as well as your AND, and or logic if you want them. Next step is your process data. This is where you get all the information from the light beams, number of beams, blocks, status, uh, system status. Uh, another cool thing is you can define your own logic in user defined. This is where you can have some bits representing whatever data you want. And lastly, we have diagnostic uh, settings. This is more for predictive maintenance. You have monitoring on the right side. You can set threshold for your temperature, quality of run alarms and all that. And it's so simple to configure this device. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at the email provided on the screen. Thank you.